Hello, Orlando Modern Quilt Guild members. I'm Charlene. Uh, Sarah is filming today, and I'm, I'm here because our Community Outreach Committee has chosen some projects for us this year, and a couple of them happen to be at Winnie Palmer right here in Orlando. Um, I want to introduce to you today a friend of mine, Peg. I've known her for about 11 years now, and I know she does lots of volunteering, and she's been gracious enough to let us use her front porch this morning, so good morning, Peg. <laughs> good morning, Charlene. <laughs> Um, so I know that you are, have been a, a volunteer at Winnie Palmer. Yes, 14 years. 14 years. Can you tell me what sort of things that you do there? What got, well, what you, got you started there? Why did you start doing that? Well, I started because we lost a son to a heart attack. And uh, one of his friends put on the uh, web, you know, find something you love doing. I thought, well, man, that's easy for me. I've enjoyed as we've traveled with the military, mm -hmm. serving any way I could around the babies in the NICUs. Mm -hmm. So often you couldn't even be in the NICU, but at least you could do, do things to help. So at Winnie, I found out that yes, we encourage volunteers in the NICU. So I went down, signed up, and 14 years later. 14 years. But the things are a little different now as far as the volunteers, you know, because of course we all have to wear masks. Mm -hmm. We wear goggles in the rooms when we go from room to room. and. Um, you know, it's just a little different, but sure. the babies are still the babies. Uh, uh, so, like, what are some of your typical duties when you're there? Um, in the past, we would be feeding. Uh, we've all been trained to feed. And of course, it helps the nurses. We certainly hold babies that are crying or fussy or, oh, sure. or some that have been there a long time uh -huh. and need an interaction with people because yes. they can't sleep all the time. Yes. And um, we fold. Not just, uh, we don't use the diapers. Those, of course, are pampers or that type of diaper, mm -hmm. disposables. Mm -hmm. But we fold uh, blankets, we fold washcloths, we fold other things, any way we can help. Okay. And basically that's what we're there to do. And if it's folding that needs to be done, that helps out the nursing staff. Mm -hmm. And if it's holding, so we're, we're good about folding and holding. Okay, all right. So how many hours would you typically work when you go in to volunteer? Typically it's either a three or four hour shift. Most of us are on four hour shifts. Okay. All right, all right. So what kind of, what would bring a baby to the NICU? What are some of the uh, circumstances that a baby would be in the neonatal intensive care? Okay, uh, because we have 150 beds, we are very large. We're either the first or second in the nation. We have sometimes babies that are transported in, mm. but typically, not well, not typically, but anytime you have a baby that is um, early, okay. and of course we Great have picture. some now as as early as 25 weeks. Okay. So we want to make sure we can, you know, give them the quality of life they need. Sure. And so they are rescued and taken immediately to the to the NICU. Um, we also have some that maybe have, could be a heart ailment or, you know, the good news is when you have really good neonatologists, they can diagnose things right away and, and get babies the help they need. Mm -hmm. In the NICU, the training of the nurses, you know, the nursing staff is just exceptional because they are really concerned about these babies and like to take care of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Um, so the two projects that we've adopted, one, one of them is the Taggies and one is the um, incubator covers. So can you tell me what's a Taggy <coughs> and why do we need it? <laughs> okay, a Taggy, I love that name. Mm -hmm. It's a square of uh, either flannel or cotton, but and around the square, there are ribbons that have been sewn in. Mm -hmm. They're looped. Mm -hmm. And so we, we leave one edge that's uh, not with loops so that that can be put over the babies in the back of the baby as he's laying. And then um, we do this so that parents can take those home, sleep with them, do whatever they want, bring them back, and it's got the parent scent. And it goes right into the incubator mm -hmm. so that a baby, you know, you may not be able to always touch them right away, or certainly not hold them all the way, but at least they've got that to... That scent. Yes, and oh that really, we've, they have found over the years that is ideal for babies, okay. the NICU babies. And then the parents can take that on home with them. And honestly, when it first came out, I could just picture an 18-month-old in his car seat, the thumb right here, yeah. and the little, <laughs> yes. tag, little yeah. you know, yeah. rubbing those little ribbons. Sure, all of us who have been moms can <clears throat> picture that. And, and uh, this smaller side size would be nice to carry it along versus a great big yes. blanket that you're dragging along. Exactly. Yeah. So the baby is laid, it's not on the baby's chest, the baby's laid on it? Uh, no, it goes over the baby, either the chest, which again, you would not want to have something here, mm -hmm. or if the baby is purposely put on a side or whatever, it's, it's just to cover 
the baby to give it a little bit of security and warmth. Okay, all right. So um, I've made a couple here for, ex for example, and I just want to talk about the process briefly. Uh, could use any of these. So uh, this is the two squares of flannel. Now, if you are interested in making these, um, all the complete directions are on, on the website on the blog, I'm sorry. So this is a taggy, two pieces of flannel. The instructions tell you exactly where to insert the, uh, the ribbons. Uh, we need to make sure that the ribbons are washable, is that correct, and that the, the flannel's been pre-washed. Uh, when you're done with this, you do stitch from corner to corner to make an X or a plus mark to keep them together. Is this sort of what you were thinking? Perfect. Okay, uh, as far as the ribbon size, you don't want anything really fine do you like no an eight, does this look like something like that you looks perfect okay okay very good so uh, please look at the <coughs> at the blog for the complete directions the next thing is an incubator cover why do we need to cover the incubator well there are two reasons number one they like for a baby to get the idea of night and day so that if it's night you know we try to get them on a schedule mm -hmm. um, then we put the dark side down and if it's during the day maybe the prettier or the lighter color side goes up. Okay. It's comforting to parents, it's comforting to the babies, and the nurses take great pride in, you know, adjusting it and making oh, okay. sure it's just right. <laughs> okay. So our directions again are on the on the the blog. Uh, the the size is given are 48 by 66. We and and typically that seems a large for a baby. I'm thinking of a premature baby, but we're trying to cover the the incubator itself. It can right. So the 48 is that the width, and then the 66 is the length. Yes, the the it's like shaped like this, and the baby's here. Then the longer pieces go this way, all the way over. Oh, the, the longer pieces go side to side. No, end to end. End to end, okay. From good. the baby's head to the feet, because that's the longer side. Okay. And then this way, uh, coming, and of course, usually that might be towards a, near a wall, but it will come over this way, the 48. Okay. So I, the one I have here, I haven't quilted it yet, but this is 48. I won't unfold it. It's 48 by 66, and we're going to make the back a darker color. Right. Now, this isn't a solid color, but it, it's, that this is be dark enough? perfect. Okay. All right. And other examples of dark colors, would these be appropriate backs? They're, we don't think of them as black and dark, but they are dark but enough. They're dark enough. You think? They're just trying to avoid all white in the back, because that would be, you know, gotcha. difficult at night. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, and our hope is that both of these items would go home with the child when, when they go home, that they'd be able to take that that blanket if they if they were used one on there and the, and the taggy as well if they were using that uh, and occasionally I will see in the laundry that there are you know ones that were left that people didn't mm -hmm. decide they didn't need for any mm -hmm. reason or whatever mm -hmm. okay very good but most of them do go home go home is anything else you want to add to what we've talked about so far <clears throat> when you're doing the taggies mm -hmm. you can also put a boy on the front and a girl on the back in other words pink on one or, or blue or you know what other colors you want but Okay. That way it could be used for either. Uh, a boy or yes, a girl. Yes, or you can do non-generic tan or brown. Okay. You know, is there a lot of could they be pieced? Could you make? Could oh, you, yes, you can certainly you can piece. piece okay. Okay. Well, thank you, Sir, uh, Peg, this morning for taking the time to talk with us. And thank you, Sarah, for doing the filming. I hope this inspires you to tackle uh, one or both of these projects. And we're saying bye now from Peg's porch. Okay, and thank you all, and the babies are going to love them. <laughs>